We are live. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Cause and Effect podcast, where we introduce the cause and effect relationships that exist in golf in relation to the hand to handle to club relationship. Um, one week after the U.S. Open, golf's booming right now. Um, we've been doing really good on our social media. I mean, I'm really happy with a lot of our content that we've been creating. Uh, appreciate all the support that we've been getting. We've been having a lot of fun with that. We we put a lot of thought into our content. I mean, if you knew like the talks that me and Jonathan have on like a nightly, daily, weekly basis, it's it's crazy. I mean, we 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 really want to have our content be presented in the right way and um and say the right said the right way and uh cuz if we don't present it properly, then it's not going to be as effective for the people. Right. You know what I mean? We so, want it to be non-offensive and we want it to be constructive and understood in a way, though. But w- the way that we're going to explain it is going to be a way that no one's ever actually explained it. Exactly. So, Which is you know. where claw law comes yeah, in, right? Exactly. That's where that was right, like the right. big thing when when you said that. I was like, oh, cool. I like I like how that's worded. And really, like claw law is just basically the guarantee that if your claws do a certain thing, the club's going to do a certain thing. Right. And then... The swing's going to do a certain thing, and the ball's going to do a certain thing, right? Right, <laughs> right yeah. Right, like we talk the club about and the ball, and actually the body guarantee also. And we're going to get into that with our podcast today. So yeah, because like the name of the podcast is "Claws and Effect," right? right? So it's like, what are the claws affecting? Right, right. And if I was to ask you, like, what are the claws affecting? I mean, we would say it's it's affecting the body, it's affecting the club, it's the direct affecting relationship is from the hand to handle to face. And then the body, like the body is like responding to what the club's doing. So as long as people understand that, like in a certain way, you can understand how that you don't have to move your body very much. If the club starts going in the right direction with the proper claw pressures, right. the claw pressures are going to make your body and your head do a certain thing. And it's going to channel all the energy into the ground through your feet in a certain way as well. The feet claws. Yes. Right. <laughs> so in order to activate them, if you don't have your hand claws, then we, you know, I mean, you're you're gonna have a problem. That's so, why yeah. the the piece of content I posted the other day, um, with with the beach ball, that was I I when you first mentioned that to me, I think it was like a couple of years ago with with the beach ball analogy, or no, it was longer than that, probably four years ago because I was still at Golf Tech. Um, it was just such a good visual to understand like how you're actually pushing, and it's a really easy way to understand posture because. You're not going to get into that pool of water, try to push that beach ball under the water with crappy posture. The only problem, though, is that with the beach ball analogy, like once you go to like the takeaway, it's like, okay, I can understand how you're pushing down against it from there. But then how do we keep that pressure with the beach ball as you go throughout the rest of your golf swing? Right. right? right. So it's like, in a sense, as you go up from like your uh, takeaway position, waist high and the ball comes out of the water, you're trying to like properly twist the beach ball and maintain the pressure against it. So when you flick the water, it goes up and back, like behind your right shoulder. Right. It's almost like an imagination of like the range ball. Right. um, The range range basket. basket, Yeah. Yeah. Right. So if you think about it there and then from the top, you're trying to hold on to the, you know, beach ball and then bring it right back down, smash it into like the water again, because that's like your pre-impact position Mm. to your impact. Yeah. Dunk it to impact. And then it's going to resurface, and that recoil effect is exactly what isn't going to happen in actually the golf swing. And that's a good segue into what we were talking about this week, which is a huge revelation that we kind of had together, Right. which was basically everybody in, I, I see this a lot with, because I'm, like we talked about last episode, I'm currently teaching, uh, I'm right. teaching a lot right now, and um, it's fun because I get to just kind of test out all of these things that we have figured out about the golf swing and really just confirms like you're just confirming everything that yes i came up with and (laughs) he's basically just having these realizations more so and becoming just a better coach yeah you know understanding is like just as a human being of his game he's playing better golf (laughs) right exactly it all comes together you see my swing you're like oh your swing is looking a lot better but um yeah the the one thing that i'm really starting to realize is that you can have the perfect backswing, you can have the perfect downswing, but if you don't understand what the club is doing from pre to post impact, then it's really not like effective. No. You know what I mean? Right. So the the revelation that we kind of had was like, okay, what if we put more attention on post impact and just understanding like the parameters of like where the handle needs to be, yep. where the club needs to be, Relative where your, your body line. needs yep. to be. Yep, exactly. Getting all that molded. And then taking that bucket of water, like you said, and throw it over your left shoulder and then recoil that back down. And then from there, it's like, okay, if I know this is my end destination, 
then it just makes the whole golf swing so much easier to understand because it's like you're having something to connect your claws to, you know, like your claws are doing a certain thing over here, but the claws need to have an understanding of the destination they're trying to arrive at, right? It's like, where is the finish line for the claws? Right. Right? Yeah, exactly. Right. That's, That's the, the ultimate goal. Exactly. Right. Because if if you're worrying about, okay, what the claws are doing in the backswing, it's like, okay, that's good. But I think the biggest problem why, why nobody's actually explained this ever in the way that we're doing it is because no one's been able to like, I mean, we have slow motion video of the golf swing and everything, but really nobody's really slow motion, like every part that's going on from like impact to post and talked about it. Right. Like, what's really what the going hands on are doing and, and our, we're all about pre to post impact, but the big thing that I figured out was that if you take post impact parameters and like where the club and the hands and body have to be, and then take it to the like top, you can just try to stick the finish at that post impact position. Right. No matter how far back you go, you're going to then arrive at the same position on the follow through, which means if you go quarter to quarter, you will end up at a quarter. But if you take the club halfway back, three quarters of the way back, full back, and you try to stop at post impact, the club's going to naturally have that re-kick. If you're maintaining your claw pressures right. and everything in your feet claws. Yes. <laughs> and it's going to recoil back around and recreate the exact same position. Correct. And the sticking the finish, that was something that when I started kind of implementing that in my own lessons, and you were doing that for a while at Golf oh, Tech yeah. before I was like really trusting that. Yes. But that's the easiest way for people to understand that when you're making a swing, you have to have in your mind an understanding of what is your objective, right? Like in the golf swing, the like golf ball's the just in the way, right? But you know where it pre and post destination are. So really, that's the, really the golf ball's in the way of your claws. Yeah. Like the yeah, it's in the way of the claw. Your focus is on the golf ball in a certain right. way, or like relative to it. Um, and we'll get more into that about like where Trail it, like edge the focus, and, yeah, right, exactly, edge, but, and how you're hitting like a certain quadrant of dimples, mm -hmm. but. When it comes down to it, though, it's like, where are you prior to hitting him and where are you at post hitting him? Right. And that's right. all that matters. Exactly. And if you have that in, in your mind, instead of worrying about all these things that you're trying to do in the swing that you've you've read or you heard about of like, oh, I'm trying to get the perfect tilt in the backswing and trying to get flexion in my legs and in the downswing and all this crazy stuff and try to jump off the ground. And, try to basically yeah. try to, it's like an a la carte idea of like the golf swing and trying to like say, Oh, I just want like this and this, and then trying to put it all together into one opposed to actually just understanding the whole shebang. Correct. Like if you understand the whole idea, then it's like just so much easier and it like it's easier for your brain. Right. Because then you're able to isolate all of your yeah, attention to on what the objective. Needs the help exactly. The most. Correct. Right. And we're, we're, we're trying to isolate all of our attention to the objective of the swing, which is, Get to the proper pre to post impact position. And really, if you could think about just trying to get all of the energy into get the proper post impact position, you can make a couple mistakes in your swing. But because your brain knows that's where you're trying to get to, it will go there. <laughs> yeah, know? right. The idea, too, that we're trying to preach, and we're going to talk about some tour players here in a minute, and we're going to try to explain maybe like why they have certain flaws in their game in certain ways based upon. Um, how they basically are using their claws. Like at what point are they activating certain levers? And that basically relates to consistency with the short game. So go, so um, I mean, Matthew Fitzpatrick, US Open winner, yep. strong, strong grip, cop yep. in the lead wrist at the top, which was like, yay, I'm glad that somebody actually right. can confirm that, hey, you can play golf, really good golf with a cup in the lead wrist. For Everybody sure. thinks like, oh, you got to be bowed with your wrist. No, that was Alatoris and uh, Fitzpatrick. Both have a cup in the lead wrist. They proved that you can do it. And um, so just talk to me a little bit about Fitzpatrick's swing. Yeah, so Matthew Fitzpatrick, he basically has that perfect cup at the top. But the one thing he does, though, is he does not set his wrist with, like, when we talk about hinging or pushing against the handle, he is not push-pulling. Like, so if you imagine your wrist being straight out, pulling with your index fingers back at you while you push your like the under parts of your hands away from you. Mm. So he pushes without pulling about three quarters of the way back. And then he really increases his pullback in his transition, which is how for a little guy, he can hit the ball so far and why he won the U S open transition right. from, because from, so down, from like from, from the, like top of the backswing to the downswing. Got it. Okay. Right. Okay. So right. he's basically from the takeaway. So it's like you go back and imagine just, pushing away with your hands and then you're turning and over that distance from like the setup to your full back swing or even like a three quarter, like you're going to have just a certain amount of pullback, which is like the levering or hinging of the golf club. And 
he creates that big transition in the downswing. But because he's an extension with his lead wrist keeping it cupped, it allows you to maximize the increase of your lag and your downswing. That's why we, you know, promote the strong grip. So when right. you think about like um, somebody that's more like neutral or bowed, they're like gonna wrong. still they're still gonna have like an increase with the increase with like push pull, but their lead wrist is just in flexion. And that's it. Mm. But the radial is such a key with keeping the connection. Like when we talk radial. about pushing, yeah. radial is how you push and pull against the cylinder or the handle got of it. the golf club. Right. Okay. okay. Got it. Got it. So then we um we were talking about um Zalatoris so does the same thing too, right? Zalatoris, like, he actually pushes like longer and doesn't increase his pull until actually about a quarter. If you think about you get to your top position and about a quarter of the way down in the transition on your way to the golf ball. He basically increases that push pull pressure and really gets like the butt end of the golf club pointing back at the ball. And then his elbows lock together because he pushes. Some people, you could call it like a float loading idea. People have talked about that, like Sergio. Um, but as long as you can understand how to work your short game with it, then it can work. It's so that's just why a little bit have, tricky. That's why they have such high hands at the top. Right, like, right, like right, a guy right, like Zalatoris. Right. Really high hands at right. the top. Well, he's right? very flexible too and lanky. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, he's got like really good claws and he can really make that work. But if your arms and hands get so far away from you, you also have to have amazing like feet connection and claws to the ground, right? right, right. Like if you are coming off balance at all and you do that, like you could just top the ball. Which is why like Zalatoris has perfect posture, like perfect right. lock very legs, strong. Right. like anchors his ankles yep. into the ground, yep. like really strong legs. Right. Like, he, and he's not a big dude either. Like he's no. lanky like me. Right, 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 right. And like, I mean, he's got to use the feet. And For the sure. Feet claws. <laughs> um, and so then one of our other people that we were talking about, this is, I think, the best one was um, Nellie Corda. So uh, when her lead arm gets parallel to the ground in her backswing, she creates the perfect 90 degree angle, which is like the perfect push pull amount. Mm. Um, for like our standards, we'll say, right, to right. where you can get to the top, you can like continue to turn, you can continue to increase your push pull. But when it comes down to it, you're going to have the best chance of being able to maintain connection to pre impact and post impact and maintain your grip. Because mm. she turns her shoulders, I would say, with driver close to 110 degrees at the top. Right. But the fact she can maintain her connection is, is really impressive. impressive, but she's super flexible. So and she sets that, it early. Yeah, and that, so if that, she didn't set it early, right, and she floated more like Zalatoris, it would be a, a lot harder for her to be able to push down. So I think because he mm. pushes down hard in his swing, it allows him to get back to that connection in the transition right. where she's got it already preset before the transition. So it's more about like, a, in a sense, we'll say, we want to try to get a predestinational idea of we set the club back in a certain way to be able to get to the like end, you know, the destination. Result. Yeah, right. So if we understand where post impact and the finish have to be, and then we understand like what has to happen to get there, right. it's just flip flopping like your ideas of like what happens in your mind. Correct. With how it works. Got right. It, but it. it's a simpler way to think of the swing opposed to going like, okay, we get our setup and everything. That's important. Always step one. But do we start working on the lever and the lag first? Or do we understand like where the club needs to go to? And then I think one of the best drills, too, that I ever found teaching golf was once a person understood, like, where to go at the post impact, if they took it back to a quarter or a half, how much speed can you create and maintain the proper parameters of post impact in that, like, mm. short amount of time? Got it. So they're taking, like, these little half swings, and then it's, like, becomes a whip. Got it. Right? And then the you start lasso, realizing the lasso, where, right? it's like a lasso, yeah, right? So I it's like, that. how, that's how you can maximize, really, um, speed, but also maintain control in your golf swing. So you're basically like understanding where your trail arm needs to go, how it needs to go from bent to straight to stick the finish Correct. while keeping your trail wrist cup. Correct. Right. Like that's the whole idea with sticking the finish is that you basically are telling your trail palm where to like go to. Yes. And then like basically how to get your trail palm to go there is for your trail arm to go from bent to straight. Right. And the direction that your hand is pointing with like, so again, if you're coming in your trail hand is pointing straight on the side of the club and you're pushing more times than not you're probably going to push a little bit to the like like towards your body we'll say or inward whereas if you're turned out with max external and pushing then you can fire it away where it's almost like you're pushing your body away from the club but you're also getting the club to get it to do what it needs to do which is which you have to achieve full extension though this to is be able I, to do that this is why i love the thought of thinking about post impact because then it it keeps you in tilt it allows you to 
feel that kind of push, like you said, where you're kind of like, like giving a, You it. can feel the snap of like <laughs> the pressure of your wrist exert towards the club creates like this whip effect with the club and how it snaps into the ground. Which is then when it rebounds and then back the recoil up at you. effect of what you did prior is going to then show you what you are going to do because your finish is basically like pre-predicted by what your post or I'm sorry, your pre-impact and then your post-impact are. Correct. Right? So once you understand that rebound effect, then you basically understand in the takeaway, if you push the same way, the club's going to rebound and lever back right. up at you to create the transition. And in the everything swing. should be a mirror image. Right. It's like, that's where it breaks down. It's like, it's not rocket science. I mean, really. <laughs> and it's just really like what come, what it comes down to is like your footwork and how much you want to utilize your body relative to how much do you want to utilize your claws or activate in certain ways. Right. And I know some viewers, you know, of course, they're not super flexible. Like, right. I'm not super flexible myself, <laughs> but I can still, like, understand how to utilize my claws to the best. And if you can get the drills and everything that we need right. to maximize your own claws and train properly, that's really, again, what we're all about. Oh, and last thing, uh, Royal Ma Rory McElroy. So with Rory, uh, we were analyzing these, you know, five people. And... Rory actually activates his push pull later than all of the other four. Mm. So what's interesting is that when you think about what could he be really doing a little bit better, and we kind of talked about this in another podcast, like his wedge game is shorter swings. It's really hard to keep locked elbows and to try to control like the increase with your lag. Got it. Because you're used to like a certain point in the swing where like his trail arm probably, I would say if you asked him, he never feels like it bends until after his trail arm is parallel to the ground in his backswing. Right, right. It only increased from there. So when you break it down to a smaller swing, yeah, you're pushing, pushing, pushing really good. But how, like when that increase happens, is there too much speed? Like, you know, when you think it's about it, vary like that. it's really hard to control that too, yeah. especially with how far he hits it and how much speed he has. That's why he hits his driver so good. Because right, Because right. he can understand like, okay, once he feels that push pull and the trail arm goes from bent to straight. Because really what you're saying is that his trail arm is basically staying locked as long, basically as long as possible. It's and Sergio then, Garcia, really, exactly, in a sense. Right. right. But if, with his wedges, if he's doing a short swing, it's like, mm -hmm. when do you, like, feel that? Right. It's like pull. Matthew Wolf when he does that reroute move with, like, a little, you know, 20-yard bunker shot, watching him do the reroute, and Ooh. he does it. Yeah. It's amazing, like, that he <laughs> yeah. can do that. But, I mean, to be that, have that kind of focus and control takes an immense amount of practice and ability and talent because right. not everyone can do that so and, we're just yeah. more about trying to build the more basic <laughs> modern generic yes. like way to like right. learn how to make whatever grip type and swing type work for you in in nelly court is the she's a great example like because her positions everything. are perfect like yes. when you look at her takeaway and you look at her top position like on the way there with that perfect picture frame lead arm when it's parallel to the ground right. but that's why when you look at the top position that she gets into even with her big turn her lead wrist and face angle are so perfectly matching with her claws. It's like the perfect holster. Mm. And if from face on, it's the perfect picture frame. Got the, it. the angle between her lead arm and wrist never gets beyond like 90 degrees. She keeps pushing so good. And that's why, again, she can increase her lag so great from the top. And she actually uses her lead foot similar to Justin Thomas. Where her lead would drive uh, heel, right. especially like, and it actually comes off the ground even with a seven iron. Right. Um, where it comes off the ground just a little bit. It's not near as vigorous, but because she does that with her claw pressure that she already established, she can maintain control of her claws, mm. and that's why she can hit so far. Got it. And of course, very good. So you said <laughs> you said to me that you thought that Nelly Corda was the closest thing to two thousand Tiger Woods. Yeah, two thousand five even. Two thousand five too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But two thousand like, Tiger Woods yeah, is like it's really is the like best. The but just matching up like the takeaway, the top position, everything just so neutral. Yeah, you know, right. And that's really what it comes down to is like making it simple. Like with Max Homa, like we talk, like it's like his transition oh, yeah. is like really simple. Like there's nothing vigorous going on. No violent, like when you look no at like action, you look right. at yeah Fitzpatrick, like his increase from the top is very violent, but he has such good control of his hands that I can guarantee you he knows exactly where his palms are pushing that transition every single time, and they're going down, out, and away towards the golf ball. Right, and that's how he can get that. But that's again, it's like a power move Correct. for a smaller guy, right? Right, yeah. But he's also if you have that control, then you can really be accurate. And that's why, I mean, his biggest thing is consistency. Right. Right. He doesn't hit a lot of bad shots. Doesn't miss fairways. True. True. The, the one thing that all those golfers have in common is that the trail palm is perfectly molded and connected Always. to that lead thumb. Their knuckle. claws. If you ever look at any tour player right now and just go on YouTube even and see if you can yeah, look it up. give us it's a there. comment and you find somebody that doesn't. <laughs> yes. Um, but honestly, <laughs> there's not one tour player that you'll find that you don't see their hands maintain their perfect grip. 
I mean, you might see Jordan Spieth even like where you'll see maybe his trail palm come off just a little bit at impact to the ground when he's scraping, but that trail palm just clamps Pushes. right back onto it's it right at post impact. <laughs> Lexi Thompson does the exact same thing. Right, right. But they're just so good with that trail palm and pushing so hard and very strong people. And they just understand like how it's like how to push against the trail side of the club. And if your lead arm's maybe not perfectly in control of it, there yeah. might be some consequences. But if you're understanding what you're dealing with, then, you know, as long as you're pushing appropriately, that's all the club matters. It, that's it, the club guarantee. The club guarantee, So our right. guarantee, though, is like we don't want any flaws. Correct. The lead side of the lead hand and arm to the body and then the trail side. And we're talking from head to hand mm -hmm. to arm to, to body, feet. shoulders. We're talking hips, Correct. feet, everything Correct. needs to be in control. Yeah. And when we get that, if you train it the right way, you're just, again, preventing from having problems Correct. and optimizing your practice time. Right. Yeah. yeah to reach exactly. your goals, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's it. Um, it's so it's funny to me how some coaches actually like don't talk a lot about the grip and go in depth with the grip because now that I understand it so much, mm -hmm. it's like, why would I not? Like, why would I not give yeah. my student like this ability to actually control well, a here, golf club? The you biggest know? problem is when you talk about that, um, is I can tell you from my own standpoint that if you don't have the proper connection with your hands pushing against the handle at all times of your golf swing and radio again is the key with the push pull. But if you right. don't maintain that, right. what, what you do with your body is irrelevant to the effectiveness of like how it's going to help your claws in the club get to where it needs to go in the swing. Cause if you just think about it as like your hands are passive Floating. like this, Floating. like let's say we're going to go like hold the golf club like this and I'm just going to swing my body and do all the positions that we need to if your hands don't twist and hinge and stuff and flex and extend, there's no way your body is going to be able to get the golf club to create speed. <laughs> You're right. Like you can't the golf ball out of your shadow. Yeah, you can so try to like you break, jump off the ground, but yeah. it's really like well, not going to be effective. Well, putting prayer grip works because yeah. we're trying to control a putter. That's a different story. Correct. That's correct. all about just minimal, like minimized control. So much control. And there's no speed really we're trying to create in correct. a certain sense. Just correct. get the putter where it needs to be. But again, when it comes to this full swing, it's like, yeah, you just have to understand how you twist your hands a little bit on the grip differently and then how you use them to effectively control the face properly from pre to post impact. That's all that it comes down to. Correct. Exactly. And in and the in the trail real staying cupped and going like keeping that's the, the key. that keeping the trail arm going or basically like so when we think about when we keep the trail wrist cupped and how the trail arm can go from bent to straight in the proper direction relative to your alignment right and right. that's like that's really the caboose of your train correct and, correct. and hopefully the lead side the engine is also helping push as well <laughs> right, properly because right. if we get the two together even if you have a little bit of a break it's in the chain really good. we're still going to end up at the proper post impact correct so the chain's going to be good <laughs> the, the yeah the nobody really talks about the trailer i'm going from bent to straight while keeping the cup like i feel right. like that's the honestly lead like hand one of the big secrets and the trail and have to just work together they're right. like a like a link chain i mean you look at jordan spieth like he's doing a lot of crazy stuff in his swing right now but the only thing that really because he's got like that kind of like weaker grip and kind of like a chicken wing coming through the only thing that really saves him is his trail palm is so connected to his lead thumb knuckle that it's basically like his lead hand is like, come on, like we need you so trail hand. Think like. about it this way. Think about it this way. <laughs> I um, actually watched a video with him, um, with his coach. And when he comes through, he was talking about how even though his lead elbow chicken wings, he keeps the lead hand and arm in internal rotation where it's like keeping the hand like this as long as he can. What that does is keeps the lead shoulder in tilt. So he is creating a swing fall, like a swing wall for himself. Mm. But the how much that lead arm bends is going to then really dictate how much this is going. So when you go to like fire that right arm and hand, it's like, okay, it's going to get to extension. But if you don't get to full <laughs> extension and it's pushing and it's already going this way from your body rotation influence, right. it's like, Whoa. then that's where we start digging craters. So then your trail and, hand has to do more. It's right, like, it's right. Required the trail hand can't do all of it. Or why would you want it to? Why don't we get our hands and arms to work adequately as a together team. as a team? Yeah. Because again, think about like a train, right? The handle of the golf club is in the middle. It's like the link that we're trying to keep together. Right. And when you put those claws together, how you maintain that connection is going to steer it. Correct. But if it breaks in any way, shape, or form at certain points in the swing, whether we're lever lagging or releasing, there's going to be a certain outcome. Right. Right. And then usually we'll say that if the backswing's a problem, obviously, then we're really going to have a problem trying to make it up in the downswing. The train's probably going to fall off the rails. So. Yeah, it's probably it's probably not going to be a 
a great result. And it'll probably be a bus full of dimples in there just yelling <laughs> at you like, what are you doing? Right, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, because we it's, it's cool. We, we talked a lot about this this week of how with what we're really talking about is is the hand to handle to club relationship and it's it's that communication between you and your golf club it's it's the club and the roadmap yeah exactly of the 45 like, we're just trying to ride the 45 correct exactly because you you basically want to be able to communicate with your golf club in a way that your club can actually ride that roadmap right like how do you communicate with your steering wheel in a perfect way to keep your car perfectly in its lane in a precise kind of three-dimensional road like the golf swing. And that is where we come in with the claws is that we are teaching you how to perfectly steer your car. It's not a just one hand, like basic joy ride. Like you have to be precise. You cannot steer your car with your feet, knees, and elbows. It will not work. The club will not respond to that in a consistent way that will have longevity and will create the results that you want to be the best golfer you can be. And think about maybe the roadmap too as an idea that imagine, you know, we have the golf club starting straight out in front of us. And basically when we think about getting onto the 45 degree roadmap, because the, the 45, when you think about the golf club, the club head has to be like parallel to the handle mm-hmm. to where it actually gets onto the Under actual the 45, which is at the quarter position, the Got end it. of it, right? Okay. So from there, it's like when we put, like first put the ignition of our claws into the key to start our engine of our train or whatever we want to call it, our car. Our car, yeah. Then from there, it's like we're pulling out of the parking lot and we're like <laughs> getting on the roadmap in the right Got way, like it. a roller coaster. And we're ready then to ride it. Got it. And then how we ride it from there is then going to dictate if we're going to be able to get back to that start position, Got which it. is at that takeaway, okay. like pulling out of the parking lot. Can we get saying. back into that same parking space yeah. at pre-impact? And where's the parking space at post? Because they should be perfectly like perpendicular to each other. Right, right. Exactly. And yeah, that's you, it. Yeah. I mean, you you can't you can't do that with your feet, knees, and elbows. Like you can you right. can do everybody. Well, you can maybe a few times every now and then, but not consistently. It's just not gonna be consistent. Like if I had to ask you, like with what we're doing different than most people, is that like what controls the golf swing? Right. It's the like, claws. I mean, and how you control, like we just talked about, like it's Thinking about it as a train. A train is honestly the best way to think about mm-hmm. how the golf club works relative to your claws. Right. Because your lead hand controls the front side. The chain in the middle is the golf club. Yeah. The handle. And then basically you have the trail side hand. Right. And how you clamp them and then how you control them. It's either your train's going to pull apart and everything's going to like, you know, all hell's going to break loose. <laughs> or we're going to arrive back and be consistent. Right. Right. But it's all this connection. When you look at tour players, there's not one person, like we said really earlier, you look at on like line of they all never time. Use even, that link. They, le- they keep their hands perfectly together. Even Tommy Ganey <laughs> had one of the craziest swings I've ever seen, but had one of the most perfect pre to post impact positions yeah, right. I've ever seen. Right. And the dude shot 50, like eight in like a tournament, like, you know, it was probably about you know eight nine years ago but the point is the guy can shoot like that with what he did because he had the claws and i think it i think it goes back to the the guarantee oh and by the way back to tommy game real quick yeah yeah. he wore two gloves right so the lead hand and the trail hand like the train it's like i'm wearing two gloves to give you more control exactly he needed he wanted to like create like exactly the ultimate unification because he knew stuff was going to break down and it probably would have wore his hands out like crazy like with the gear effect i remember watching him on big break that was like that was so so wild like Yeah, good, that was good. Good times. Um, but yeah, I just feel like uh, I mean, I look at all of our comments. Like, thank you so much for all the support we've been getting yes. on our TikTok thank and you. Um, all of our other social media channels. Um, it's it's just been awesome. Like we when we set out to do this, like we, I mean, with what you figured out when you kind of figured out exactly like the right. the claws and what the hands are doing mm-hmm. to like the exact degree, and then once we kind of figured out like, hey, like let's. We need to really introduce this to people because you gotta get the public to realize like yeah. the obvious that's been honestly hidden. It's hidden in plain it's sight. It's like it's seriously right there. It's there. But nobody I mean, it took me, I would say, well over ten thousand like lessons in right. a sense to really be able to see it all the time. Right. No matter if it was in like a bay atmosphere or outdoors or in a living room. Right. Like I can fix people anywhere because I like know where the club and the hands need to be. Yes. And once you get to that point for yourself. Even it's like your opportunity of like being able to continue to improve is endless. Right. Opposed to then having to worry about a root problem, you know, or like, again, if we're thinking about (laughs) swinging with our bodies more so 
and like, okay, well, if your body, like, what happens if your knees start wearing out? What happens if you're like, you know, you maybe added or lost some weight? Like, it might really <laughs> dictate what's going on. So, but if your claws never fail, right? We have that connection. That's it. You know, I was just thinking we've talked about this a lot, and uh, we basically said like with claw law and with the claws is we're basically creating the language of how to communicate with the golf club. And the thing is, is that people have been trying to communicate with their golf club, but they're not speaking the right language. Right. They're not. No, they're not. It's just, they're like, basically it's like a mask. Like they're trying to think about the elbows or they're thinking about putting like a ball between your knees or a ball between your elbows and then trying to like mask where the actual unity is coming from. Right. So it's like your elbow connection is important. Yeah. But where does it stem from? Your palms. So if we understand where the palms are, you don't even need the ball. Right. And so you can just go it's train like effect. that. Like it's a, it's the effect. Right. It's like, yeah, they were, we're like, again, kind of going around the bush here. It's like, or beating around the bush here. It's like, we are like the idea of what we're trying to do is there, but the actual, again, root key is just not there. Right. Exactly. Like nobody's really getting the hands like, right. Like everybody's like, they're, it's the definition of insanity, right? They keep just doing the same thing over and over and. They're totally. communicating with the golf club and the golf club's just like looking up at them like, what are you doing? Like, I don't know what you're saying. It's not like, it's not working. Like this communication's not working. Like right. you gotta, you gotta find a new language and that's it, what we're creating. We're if, creating the language of how to communicate with the golf club. And guess what? This is how you communicate with the golf club. Imagine this. If Tiger Woods, you told him, take the worst possible grip that you could get, which I would define it as lobster claws because we're trying to grip the club like this. No pinches, just yeah. holding it like this, you know, right. and tell him hit a golf ball. He might be able to get it off the ground and hit it pretty decent, but anyone else more so probably would not be able no. to. No way. Because he has like the perfect claws. But the idea though is that is like, again, if your hands are not, I mean, they are the root key. And if you're thinking about everything else being the root key, then you're going to be a lost cause. Yes, I mean, really, exactly. Like, lost, lost. You're going to spend too much time, and it's like it's an endless battle. Like I've seen it for years. Yes, people that have been playing golf for forty years, fifty years, and mm. they still don't get it. I know. And they've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on lessons and train aids and videos, and it's like. But he can't, Gary still can't like hit a chip <laughs> shot 10 feet like properly. He just, Gary, you know what I mean? And he's got Gary. like the, like these, like, like these training on, that's Gary. like the two side chipper. It's like, yeah. oh, geez, it, oh, that's geez. even like the worst. It's like, that's where you really start. The spot, like the um, spiral of the tunnel really starts going oh, downhill geez. when we have to revert to like chipper, a special club. Oh man. You know, like the <laughs> infomercial club. If you, when you, yeah. when you start to revert to the infomercial clubs, that's when you know, like, okay. Like you, you've given up. We're going to possibly contemplate getting a boat. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Yeah, that's the But club. the claws will bring anyone back. And it's like, we want to exactly. give hope. That's what one of the biggest Giving things hope. that we're about is like, there is hope. Like, I don't care there how is. bad you are. We can fix it because your claws are also directly related to like all the tens and ligaments through your hands and arms to your brain and to your feet. So if you can control these... We're getting like the three for one deal right there. Exactly. And then the claw and the ball and everything are also additional benefits. <laughs> I mean, the the club and ball are like waiting for you to come to this awakening moment right. where you're actually realizing like, okay, hey, this is the connection I need in golf. This is how I communicate with my golf club. My body is going to react to that. My swing Just becoming, is going to react like, to yeah, that. Yeah, making sense like, of what's going on because one. golf's tough because... It's we're swinging in a 3D environment. Right? right. And so like sometimes when you go back, it's like how many people know where the actual club's at in their backswing? Like not many people because no. nobody's went like tick, 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 tick back and actually checked it or even known how to check it. So like once you start the swing back, it's almost like your brain just shuts off for a minute. And then in a split second or two, you're hitting the golf ball. And that's what it was. It's the classic. And then you try like, to relate back to what just happened. And then that just it's yeah, it's not their fault. It's they're, no, they're, they're being told they're being told that. <laughs> your body rotation takes the club back. Or it's just like, in general, though, like the biggest here? thing, though, is that like when you think about it, if people were actually taught by understanding the tick, tick, tick back yes. thing, and we start from over here at Post Impact yeah, and how it goes, it literally can save years and just like years. your mental health, um, we'll talk anxiety, depression about golf, your marriages, it's your relationship, it's, it's going to fix it all. So those out there that are having the real struggle, because uh, there's so many, like, because golf is a very emotional sport. It very it's like, it, that's why they always call it a love-hate sport. 
But it's because so difficult. you love it when their highs are high, but, but you lows. hate it when the lows are low, no. and the lows can get so bad. Think about and if we always have the cure to help you get off that cycle, that's what we're all about. That's it's what, just I mean, fixing There's no golf. secret to why me and you were the best coaches in Detroit Metro. True. Because we understood like how to get that cure as quick as possible. We because cared. we related it back to... Not only did we care, to, though, but we yeah. understood, though. That's Correct. it. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. But we related it back to post-impact. Right. Like, what's happening at post-impact? Oh, okay, this is broke down. You're not keeping the grip together. Your weight's not on your lead side enough. Your trail wrist isn't cupped enough. Your face is too closed. Like, understand that, then build your way back. And then it's like, right. okay, now get the proper takeaway position to help perfect your and then if you have proper like um let's say or if you have like problems with like your pivot and your backswing say you're swaying Mm -hmm. or you're not hinging properly and you're like moving off the ball too much that's why we always promoted like the pre-setting of the body towards the lead foot at setup and then you can pre-close your shoulders and hips at setup to help your swing path go more and sit out and also help your pivot and it's like by pre-setting those angles you're just greatening your chances of being able to get the golf club to arrive at pre and post impact properly correct exactly like you know in your brain okay you're trying to, we're talking about the train and everything. It's like, okay, this is where the train has to arrive. Right. This is the end of the track. Right. Cause right? it'll react from there and it will have a perfect reroute back at you. When, and we can talk about that recoil, <laughs> right. but, but it, otherwise the train track might, let's say if we're twisting our hands too much, the, you're going to dump that train right over the rails. I mean, or if you come through and you're hanging onto it too long, then it's going like, to go like then, off the Well, then track. the caboose is going to be hanging on too long <laughs> yeah. and underneath and like, I can't flip over. And that's basically grooves. So the train's yeah, exactly. really grooves. I mean, yeah, exactly. His heel and toe, in a sense, too. Like, you can relate it all like that when you think about that dynamic. Because if, if you look at the the end goal is once you get post-impact, you're basically just trying to stop it right there. Like, it's not right. going to stop, but you need to yeah, try yeah. to stop Your it Your consciousness there. needs to be at that point because that's where the real, when you think about, like, the one part of the swing where it has to be, like, supreme concentration, it should really be from, like, impact to post-impact. Right. Like, six inches before and after the ball or even just so at the back of the ball to six inches past the ball oh, got it. Okay. just like that little area of focus because when we think about everything going on if the concentration is lost from there and you're thinking about like looking back and checking your backswing <laughs> or like you're thinking about something else like right. it's not it's going to allow you to move yeah and then if your concentration of what you have to do from pre to post is not concentrated enough then it's going to cause too many small variables but when True. you get it right though it's amazing. Then you can hit draws on point, straight balls on point. Very hooks rarely on, you can do, hit any shot in golf. Very rarely do we see somebody actually getting the proper post impact position in the rehinge because everybody kind of like blacks out. Yeah, once they, you, like, you're already once blacked they, out before you even get to pre impact. Exactly. Like once they're like starting the downswing, I've had so many students where they're like, I feel like I just kind of black out. Well, the swing like, happens too in like two seconds. So I mean, right? Exactly. You think about True. it. Like you can't until you've actually worked on your golf swing and broken it down without a golf ball in front of you, slow right. motion, and really felt every single part of the swing right. and then understood how to like mold your claws together against the club. <laughs> right, right. That's truly where the awakening comes from. True. It's not by sitting out there and pounding golf balls and being a range rat. Yeah. Like it's true. that doesn't do anything. If anything, it actually sometimes makes it completely worse. Yeah. Because once you kind of have that awareness of right. what your claws focus are doing, on what you have to focus in, you on. can't black out. If you have awareness of what your claws are doing, it's subconscious. Correct. So yeah. it's like, even though it happened so fast, you can still feel what happened. And then you're, post impact position because you're going to know where it needs to be will tell you the story of what you did wrong correct that's like an easy way for yourself to be able to self-analyze and correct because you know like okay if i if i try to stick my finish and the club ends up like in a certain spot you're gonna be like oh well it ended up there because of what i did prior to right and it's like okay so now i just fix that and if i do this right the club's gonna end up where it needs to be and that's like oh i like that that's a cool that's a cool way to think about it it's, it's really the like Hand and body to club and ball guarantee. Like the ball will do the same thing Every if time. the club and the body is in the same position. Correct. That's in it. the in the hand the body and the club will be in the same position if the claws are doing what they're supposed to do. Correct. It's the root Boom. to the key. Love it. All right. Awesome. Great podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. This has been this is so fun. Like we love just kind of nerding out about all this stuff. Um again, we appreciate all the support yes. that we've been getting. Um, all the links are in the bio. Um, we, we've got our discord. If you haven't joined that yet, go join that. Uh, you get a free swing evaluation from Jonathan and I, 
Um, that's yep. a really valuable Absolutely. <laughs> value. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. We, we know what we're talking about. We're going to help you. You can um, see the testimonials on our Discord. Yeah. We're helping a lot of people. Without um, ever seeing them. Exactly. <laughs> Other right. than their videos. It's all, but, it's, all but, yeah. <laughs> it's all virtual. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe someday we'll find a way to have we people will. come see us. Oh, we, we um, get, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm teaching, and so you can come see me if you want, if you want to fly to Michigan. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is this is so fun though. Like, I mean, yeah, it's kind of hot up in our studio right now, but we we battled through it. Yep. Uh, we did good. <laughs> uh, it's gonna it's hot in, in Michigan for June, but um, yeah, thanks again for all the support. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of more content like this coming out. Um, and yeah, just keep an eye out on all of, all of our socials. Links are in the bio. Um, I hope this is really helping a lot of people um, based on the comments and everything that we're seeing and based yeah. on our testimonials, what we've seen For sure. is helping. Yes. So we're, we're having the impact that we want to have. Um, again, we're not bashing anybody. We're not saying everybody's right. We're not saying everybody's wrong. We're just trying to open up your eyes to the um, things that are hidden in plain sight. The club to what guarantee. the best players are doing, which is the club guarantee. Right. Awesome. Cool. cool. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Appreciate Thank you, you watching, and we'll see you next time.